I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in a new week. Hey, we're in the last month of the year. Uh, I trust the Spirit of God is helping you daily and that's what the reason for this broadcast. To give God an opportunity to help you today. Praise God. And that's why before we go further, I want us to make requests from the Lord for our daily bread. Join me in faith right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive even as I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I haven't said that. Expect a miracle today. Oh, Pastor, what next do I need to do? Nothing. Just believe. Believe that those things which you have said, those things that you have requested will come to pass. Jesus said, when you do, you what you say. Praise God. Now, that's just how it works. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about his peace because he said this month is a month of peace. Now, I've been t- taking you through different dimensions. Turn your Bibles with me to our text scripture. And that's Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. He says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Now I'm reading from the old King James. He says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, because he trusted in him. Now, it's not enough to just proclaim and say, God will keep me in perfect peace. He told you the conditions there. If your mind is stayed on him, why would your mind stay on him? Because you trust in him. Praise God. And I took you last time when we went to John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus speaking here. He said, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Now, last week we, we entered this and we began to I began to point out to you what this statement meant. Now listen. Jesus wasn't just giving us peace so that we'll be peaceful. Jesus specifically said, My peace, I'm handing it over to you. Now I need you to understand, because see, if you don't understand, you know the Bible, Jesus actually said when he talked about the parable of the sower, he said, the seed that fell, fell by the wayside are those who hear the word, and because they did not understand it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. See that now? Now, so understanding is very important. And that's why we take time to teach you the word of God. Now here Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Now you just think he's saying, oh, you know, I love you so much. I want to give you peace. No, 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 no. He said, the peace that I have, the peace that belongs to me, I really wish it to you. That's what he meant. I give my peace to you. And that's why Isaiah 53 and verse 5, he says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So his peace was taken away from him that it might be given to you. Now, did you get that? You see why? This is the reason you must have peace. Praise God. So when God is saying, look, I want you to be in peace. It's not just something he's wishing. It's something he's done something about. And Jesus came and said, look, I'm willing to sacrifice my peace that they may have it. Now that's all what Jesus was talking about. About laying down his life for his friends. 
That's what he's talking about. He wasn't just talking about dying. He was talking about, look, what I have, I want you to have. And to make it so sure, he said, you know what? I'm handing over to you before God what is mine. So from today, it becomes yours. And what's that? My peace. That's what Jesus said. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Then he goes on to say, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because I have released to you my peace. Glory to God. Now, now did you, are you getting this today? He's giving you peace. Hey, what else do you want? What's troubling your heart? What's troubling your mind? He has handed over the peace that he heard. And, and I said this, I said he did it before God. Now guess what? The Holy Spirit is the one who sees to it that he actually did it. And he's the same one who sees to it that we actually have the peace that he left. If you are not enjoying peace, something is wrong. Now, as true as this is, that's why Jesus said, do not let your heart to be troubled. What does that mean? It means if your heart is troubled, it's because you allowed it to be. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the situation that happens. If your heart is troubled, you're responsible for it. So that's, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. So it's in your power to let your heart to be troubled. It's also in your power to say, no, I refuse to let my heart to be troubled. Now, what is his peace? Jesus enjoyed so much peace. Nothing could shake him. Nothing could ruffle him up. Nothing. 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 Of every experience Jesus had, he always came out in charge. He always came out on tops. He always came out victorious. And not because he, he was fighting any serious battle. He always knew what to do. You know why he always knew what to do? His father was always with him. He said that in John chapter 8. He says, he says, my father is always with me. He says, he has never left me alone because I do always those things that please him. He that is with me, he that, is, he that sent me is with me. That's what he said. My father has not left me alone. The reason is because I do always those things that please him. And this was why Jesus enjoyed so much peace. Now, I've told you this before. In, in Hebrews chapter 13, he says, For he has said, Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 5, he says, For he has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you may boldly say. Now, the same way he was with Jesus is the same way he is with us today. The same way he was with Jesus is the same way he is with us today. What does that tell you? Now, when he says, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. You know the reason? is so that he will always tell you what to do. Now, if he's always there, now you've got to believe this, praise God. If he's always there, to tell you what to do. Brothers and sisters, listen, don't get trapped in any situation. Never, never, never. Don't get trapped in unpleasant situations. Don't get trapped. You know, sometimes we take on ourselves judgment against ourselves. You see something wrong happening, you don't even know what to do. Hey, hey, you can stop it right there before it even goes further. Now, even if it has gone so far, you have the ability to stop it right there. 
don't let people make you feel or believe that you have no power at all. You do have. You have one power that nobody can take away from you. You know what that power is? The power to trust in God. The power to believe God. And you know something? Believing is a choice. Oh God, fill my heart with belief. No, 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 no. Believing is a choice. You look at me and you tell me, I believe what you say. You made that choice to believe. See that? So when he says, do not be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. He is telling you, you have the ability to keep your heart in shape so that it is not troubled. Now, how will you keep your heart from being troubled? Believe him. Believe him for what? He is there with you. So what do I do with him being with me? Ask him what he wants you to do in any particular situation. Lord, I, I, I don't have money right now, Lord. What should I do? Praise God. I, I, I'm feeling this, this feverish sensation. Now, if he's always telling you what to do, tell me, why should your heart be troubled? I mean, if the Lord is always there to tell you what to do next, where will the trouble come from? But the question is, is he there? Of course, he promised to be there. Then do you believe that he is there? And that's where the problem is. Most people don't really believe that he is there. Now, remember the Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, what is faith? Listen, he has said, he has said, he has said. See, faith cometh by hearing. So now he has said. Question, have you heard him say to you? Has he said it to you? See? Now, if you hear him say to you, I will never leave you, then do you believe it? Then start acting like he is there with you. When something comes, just say, oh, you know what? Give me a minute. Give me a moment. Now, now, when we say these things, people think, oh, you're just talking. You've not seen you know, real life um, challenges before. Oh, we have. We do see challenges, praise God. We do see challenges. I remember years ago when they told me my wife would not be able to carry a child until we do some procedure and stuff like that. And and they, we were in the hospital and she was going through um, some, some issues. And they were telling me, they were just trying to tell me, this doctor will come and tell me this. I, I, I just got up. I said, you know what, hey guys, you know what? If I take my wife home tonight and come back tomorrow, will she die? They said, well, you have to take a decision quickly. I said, thank you. I turned to my wife. I said, let's go. So where are we going to? I don't know. Let's, let's just leave this environment. And we're going to ask God what to do. Praise <laughs> God. And she followed me. And we left and got home. I said, let's just ask the Lord what to do. Because, because it was all noisy over there. And then we asked the Lord, Lord, what would you have us do? And the Lord directed us where to go to. And bless God, the same woman that was told she would not be able to carry a child until that procedure takes place. We have four children now. Praise God. Why? Now, we didn't let our hearts to be troubled. If we did, now, you know what it is. Take it, leaving the hospital. You're, you're in a condition. And the hospital, the doctor is telling you that we need to take care of this thing right now. And, and you are saying, you know what? Let me leave this environment. Let me leave the hospital. Not to another hospital per se, but just, just leave this place. Why? So that we can hear God who will tell us what to do. Praise God. Now that's the point. It's not blind faith like people think. I don't take drugs. The reason we don't take drugs is because God tells us what to do. He tells us what to take. It, you understand what I'm saying? Now that's how it works. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Listen. I want to bless you right now. If you are ready, stretch your hands towards this screen right now. However you want to stretch your hands, let that just be an act of faith, an action you do to show that you believe in the prayer I want to pray. 
Father, I release your blessing upon everyone watching me right now. I speak peace into their hearts. I declare today everything that have troubled you comes to an end now. I ask that your ears be open to hear the voice of God tell you what to do next. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are coming out of that troubling situation. You are coming out. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Have the best day ever. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.